open it in Adobe Camera Raw. The way to open a picture in Adobe Camera Raw is simply from Adobe Bridge. You can go to File, Open in Camera Raw, right? Or if you prefer, use the keyboard shortcut of Command R. Thumbs up for that, right? Um, or if you prefer clicking, you can control click on your picture and click open in camera raw. Right? There's a lot of ways to get there. Why? Because it's a really it's really the next step. Okay? Um, open in camera raw. What is camera raw? It's this. It's a dialogue box that shows on one side a preview of your picture. On the other side, it has a set of controls. I am all for maximizing your screen real estate, right? There's a button right here that when you click it will maximize this dialog box to take up your whole screen. Do that when you're using Camera Raw. You're not looking at the rest of your screen. You want to really focus on your pictures. This is like serious um, editing. Okay, so here we are looking at a picture. Um, it's all right, but it could be better tonally. Um, maybe even compositionally. We'll adjust a few things here. So let's say I think that the whites in the snow are too bright. Right? I want to make that a little darker. I have a set of controls on the side here that allow me to, depending on um, which control I drag, manipulate different tonal, um, I call them regions, of your image, meaning the bright areas, the dark areas, the midtones, can be controlled separately through these sliders of exposure, um, shadows, and uh, highlights. So let's say I want to change just the brightest areas of my picture. Oh, it's pretty straightforward. Look, there's something called highlights. I'm going to click that. I'm going to drag it down to the left, and you'll see that Indeed, the snow got darker. Should we see that again? Ready? Let's bring it back up so you can see what it was. You see the snow lighter now, right? And I'm going to bring these highlights down. You see the snow darker, right? Did everybody see that change? Okay. Uh, pretty drastic change in the highlights, right? That snow looks really dark, dirty and like New York y now, right? Don't we miss this? No, oh, it's gone. Um, no, it's not. It's snowy again. <laughs> um, but it didn't change the dark areas of my image. Notice the dark areas being like the awning or whatever this is called over the doors or the post off the little mailboxes next to the doors here, right? Let's say I wanted to control those tonal regions. Let's say I want to make them darker or lighter. What I would do is manipulate the shadows slider. Right below highlights is shadows. These two controls are the first two controls you want to play with in Adobe Camera Raw. Try to get things looking good using the manipulation of your highlights and the manipulation of your shadows. Um, in, in earlier versions of um, Adobe Camera Raw, like CS5, shadows is called fill light, just so you know. So here I am dragging my shadows darker, right, down, dragging my shadows lighter, Right? Can you see how these areas, and even to some extent the bricks, which are kind of a dark tone, really change? Right? But the snow is pretty much remaining the same. And there's some dark areas of the snow patch. Actually, they get darker. Right? Like this leaf here certainly gets darker when I pull the shadows down, but these light areas of the snow, the borders of, around the door, are not changing so much. So now I'm able to really manipulate, just tonal, um, isolate tonalities to change my picture. That's very powerful. It's something that would take a lot of work um, pre-computer. So I'm going to manipulate my shadows, manipulate my highlights, making sure that it looks good, really. What am I trying to do when I'm manipulating my tones? I'm trying to uh, provide as much information in my picture as possible uh, maybe evoke something emotionally, 
or direct my uh, viewer's attention to a portion of the picture, meaning if something's too bright and I don't want attention going there, I'll dim it. If something's too dark and I do want attention going there, I'll lighten it up. Um, let's say there's extraneous stuff in my picture. I can change the border of my picture very easily here in Adobe Bridge using uh, this thing called the Crop Tool. What does the Crop Tool do? Well, if you click it and click and drag a rectangle, right? you'll see it provides a little border. And if you press Enter, it crops to that border. Let's say you don't like the crop. What do you do? Click the crop tool. You're right back here, right? And then I fix it a little bit, okay? So um, there's a number of other controls in this program, obviously. These are some of the basic controls. Um, highlights, shadows, cropping. You want to do for every picture, actually. Every picture you want to just make sure your highlights and shadows are as available as possible. There's other things you can absolutely do. They're not necessary. Some of those other things are cropping, which I just showed you, or color adjustment. There's a number of ways that your picture's color can look weird. <clears throat> And we can get into those when we're shooting. And we've talked about them a little bit when we were setting up pictures, right, for shooting in the lab. They take pictures with, like, colored gels and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, if the color seems off in your picture, you can adjust it very easily by clicking and dragging on this top slider called temperature. And it'll make your picture seem warmer or colder, yellower or bluer basically, right? And honestly, an adjustment of plus 10 to minus 10 is often all that a picture needs. So give it a little wiggle. See if it just looks better. It might look fine at first, but that's your brain sort of like reinterpreting it and like taking that yellow and, and forcing it into looking white in your mind. And if you adjust things a little bit, you'll see, oh, oh, that's even better. Or, oh, that's a little worse. Slide it back and forth, okay? Um, another control that I particularly enjoy in um, Adobe Bridge is this control down here called Clarity. Clarity uh, is a control that allows us to increase or decrease the amount of what I call localized contrast. Meaning, if you have something very dark next to something very light, like you have well, here with these mailboxes and labels or mailboxes and um, white painted areas, you'll get uh, an increase in the difference when you increase your, uh, your, your, your clarity. And when you decrease your clarity, which I don't really do, you sort of make things a little fuzzy at the edges. So let's go ahead and look at this. So I'm going to drag clarity up and you'll see things get crisper. You see how it sort of like pops? Here, I'll bring it back down again. This is where things were. And things seemed fine before, right? I didn't have, I was like, oh, this picture is okay. Um, when I drag clarity up, do you see how it, like the numbers become much more prominent from the doors, the sort of crinkles in the paper, the, everything seems to be a little more intense in the, Localized contrast. It's a very interesting um, control that somewhere in there, I think, will mimic the way that when we stare at something with our eyes and sort of slightly move our eyes, because we never stare at exactly something, we get um, these sort of burned in after images in our retina that remain just for a moment. And this clarity, I think, um, in a way, uh, evokes that sensation of actually looking at something and, and staring at it for a moment and having that sort of after image. So, clarity. 